number two is competence. The Cambridge Dictionary tells us that competence means the ability to do something well. Not just to do something, but to do something well. And Proverbs 18, 16 tells us that a man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. That is from the New King James Version. That a man's gift brings room for him and brings him before great men. Proverbs 18, 16. How does that gift bring you before great men? You have to be competent. God can give you a natural ability to sing. But if you don't go for choir practice, if you don't go for rehearsals, if you don't go to train your voice, you can still be a singer who is not good. Among us, we have natural born doctors. But how would you know that you're great at helping patients if you never went to medical school and finished? How would you have known? Competence needs mastering of a certain skill. And let me tell you one thing. Competence, because it is a mastery of a certain skill, it needs time, it needs preparation, and it needs investment. A lot of us, God is taking us to places, but we're not willing to put in the time. I was triggered when I was listening to a certain someone and this one pastor said, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, all those men are not stupid. That is why they've been able to build such empires. They're not stupid. But you know why their marriages have failed? It's because they could have been competent at their marriages as well, but they didn't put in the time, the preparation, or the investment. So, as a result, whatever you don't put in time, preparation, or investment, however good you are at it, it will fail. Why do people go for refresher courses? Why is it that you'll find people in the tech world still going for tech summits, tech meetings, they are flying all over the world, have gone for a tech conference? If you're already good, why do you need to go? Why do you need to still listen to other people? Because you need to put in the time, the preparation, and the investment and let me tell you what's interesting the bible tells us in ecclesiastes 9 11 from the niv and king solomon says because he wrote ecclesiastes that i have seen something else under the sun the race is not to the swift nor the battle to the strong nor does food come to the wise or wealth to the brilliant or favor to the land but time and chance happen to them all do you know that there is a person who probably had no business being rich? Had no business. Let me use a, a proper example because you can be rich in many ways. Do you know there is a person who had no business being a prosperous business person? In their family, everybody is poor. In their family, everybody loses money easily. Even from family background, you can see. Even from spiritual background, they don't look like they are prayer warrior or anything. Like everything around them looks like it doesn't favor them. This person is probably not talented at business because also people were talented at finance and business and money. This person had no talent, but they said, let me put the effort and the skill. Let me put the time and the preparation and invest in it. And when the time and chance happened to collide, they collide with that person. We were speaking when we were coming. I was coming with Maria um, and Jocelyn. And we were talking about the right honorable speaker. Anita Among was in FDC until the last election. Her deputy Thomas Taeba was in FDC until the last election. It is when they cross over to NRM, time and chance align, and guess what? Do you know how many people have been in NRM for years and they've not even been ministers? Time and chance aligned, which means that in this life, it's never a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Everything that everybody has in this life, the rich people and what, all of those things can happen to all of us. But it's a matter of if we are prepared when time and chance align. But how will you know when time and chance will align? You will never know. You will never know. 
so we can't just waste life like that if you hear something you might say oh i don't have money for some things if you see there's a free course those websites like udemy on, on um google have free free courses for things just take the course do it if you hear there's a free seminar somewhere take it do it for me i've learned to invest like heavily in certain things because there will come a time and sometimes it's people you meet in those things that you've invested in you sat with someone in a particular class and one time they have an opportunity maybe you guys just talked and you told them ah i'm looking for a job then they see a job and they remember they're like oh yes i know someone who might want it time and chance have aligned but if you had never gone for that thing where would you have met the person where would you have had that conversation so it's never a matter of if, it's a matter of when. We need to always be prepared. So you want to get married, but you cannot cook. Again, we're having a discussion while we're coming. And, and Maria said something about how marriage can quickly humble you. You can say me, I can't cook, I can't do this, I can't do that. And she was telling us about her husband. And she said, when we had just started dating, he would even tell you, baby, relax. He cooks breakfast cooks lunch maybe watch this movie i watched it without you watch watch it as i cook for you marriage came papa person said me i can't eat food cooked by a maid immediately things were switched so if you're there and you're like ah for me i can't cook and my husband will understand that i can't cook for me i i, I don't know how to forgive and let me tell you people should not offend me because i don't know how to forgive for me, I don't know how to be selfless. I don't know how to put other people above myself. But you're there praying every day. Like even this time I'm going to prayer mountain. By the way, once we finish our session, I'll go under that tree and have a special prayer to ask God for a husband. I am telling you time and chance will align. The marriage will show you shaggy. You will cry hot tears every single day. Because yes, the when has happened. But were you prepared for it? Were you prepared for it? So you can't be competent if you're not prepared. Because you can be competent in many ways. You can be competent as a wife. The end Proverbs tell us that many people are noble and what but, but you surpass them all. Meaning that this one had looked at the Proverbs 31 woman and said, this one is competent. She surpasses them all. So you can be competent in work, in home, in what. But how do you become competent? By time, preparation, investment. Now, the problem that we have is that for us, we think when we are waiting for certain things in our lives, that's a time for wishing. It's a time for preparation. Mm. It's not a time where you're like, Eh, mama, can there be people who have cars? Eh, mama. But then, you're throwing rubbish in someone's car. <laughs> people who have houses. Eh, mama. But you're making, like, you can't even take care of the rented house where you're in. So when time and chance align, what will happen? Have you seen people who have their real homes, not rented homes? Their real homes, Nenga, you don't want to sit in their chairs. The devil's bait against competence is procrastination. Think about this whenever you say, I'll do this tomorrow. Just understand that that is the devil fighting against your competence. Delayed disobedience is the, delayed obedience is the same as disobedience. I hope you know that. But if God tells you to do something today and you do it five, today at 1 p.m. and you do it today at 5 p.m., it's the same as disobeying. It is a scripture. I don't know how I forgot to, to write down that scripture, but someone can look for it about delayed disobedience being delayed obedience being the same as disobedience. But I grew up and my mom would always tell us that if she tells you after lunch, make sure you wash dishes and you wash them at 5 p.m., she'll be like, But I washed the dishes at 5. What time did I tell you to wash them? At 1 p.m. Why did you wash them at 5? You disobeyed. And you know what the devil does? The devil tricks us into thinking we have a lot of time. Mm. You have a lot of time left. Oh, there's a deadline at work. Some of us will say we can work under pressure. And you're like, I will wait until that day. Do you know that your laptop can crash the day before the presentation? Do you know you can fall sick? Do you know you can lose someone? 
and your brain can't think. Do you know that you can die without accepting Jesus Christ in your heart? So now you think you have a lot of time left? Mm. But now you have a lot of time left. But now you have a Sorry, dear. Sorry. But we have gone. When we put off something that we should do, it becomes easier to delay the next thing that comes up. We have unnecessary delays in our lives because we have put a backlog. There are things that God can't do for you until certain steps are taken. And we've procrastinated in those steps. We've not done the necessary work. I'll do tomorrow, I'll do tomorrow. In God's world, by the way, in God's world, you're supposed to be married at 25. But there's a boyfriend you've refused to break up with since 18 because until we've been together long. We've been together long. But the man is bad. But we've been together long. Bananga health over length. I don't know how many times I'll say that thing. Even for hair, cut it off if it's brown. It will grow again. So there's, because God wants you, in God's plans, you should have broken up with that person. Then you take two years of healing. Then he gives you a fresh person. Now, every time you don't break up with that person, you have extra two years ahead of your life to heal. Extra two years. Because the person God wants, and now the problem with again that is that when now you miss a line, God will give that person to someone else. Because also God has a plan for that person. That isn't dependent on you. So if God tells that man you'll be married at 32 and you're going to marry Joy who will be 25 and then that man reaches 31 and you, who you were divine purpose supposed to marry isn't on your right track, he will give him someone else. God always has options. He can't be depending on you. He always has options. So some of us have missed. I am telling you I'm very offended today myself. Some of us have missed certain things in our lives because of procrastination we've missed you've missed a certain person you were supposed to meet at a certain point simply because of procrastination and procrastination can be very tiny things a project you were supposed to work on yesterday and then you say i'll work on it early in the morning a person you were supposed to meet at midday and you were supposed to have gone to the bank at midday and that was the person you were supposed to meet at that time you didn't know them, it was just a divine connection. At midday, they come, they do their transaction, they go. You, you were home finishing your assignment. And the devil is very calculative, I want you to know. He knows. You see the way the devil kept testing Jesus with the word of God? The devil knows that God has very wonderful plans for us. So he always tries to put us out of alignment. Out, 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 out. In small, small things. He doesn't bring big situations that will scare you and you're like, eh, this is really the devil. No, small habits. Small habits. If you would have woken up at 5 to pray until 6, let me sleep a little bit more. You start praying 30 minutes. You move from 30 minutes to, I'll pray in the car I go, I'm already late. You move from that. Slowly by slowly, the prayer life goes just like that. He's not going to bring big situations to push you off. Tiny things. There is an example in Acts 24. There is this Roman governor called Felix who was supposed to appeal Paul's case. And, you know, Paul goes to him and whatnot. And then Felix tells, he tells Paul, go away now. When I have a convenient time, I will call for you. But you see, Paul was a man that was anointed by God. Such a man comes to you to appeal his case and you tell him, go away. I will come, I will call for you at a convenient time. Do you know what happened? Did the convenient time come? The guy wanted a bribe from Paul, which he did not get, and immediately he lost his job. He was taken away from that position as Roman governor. But imagine how many things in his career would have been aligned if he had only helped the man of God. But he said, come back at a more convenient time. See, now the book will but again, he was still supposed to appeal that case. Not like the case was in his jurisdiction. He was still supposed to appeal it. Let me tell you one thing about procrastination that God taught me last year. Procrastination is pride. The Bible says, <laughs> God humbles the what? Procrastination is? Very soon, the more you keep saying, I'll do this tomorrow, 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 God will so very quickly humble you. 
because you can't be guaranteed of tomorrow you who didn't create heaven and earth you can't be guaranteed of tomorrow so proverbs 18 16 tells us that your gift will make room for you okay so you need to be competent with your gift be competent with whatever you're doing even if it's not where you're divinely aligned at least still be competent at it isaiah 63 tells us that nations will come to your light and kings to the brightness of your rising there are four those great men that proverbs tells you that will open doors for you will only come at the brightness of your rising. There are four. However good and talented you are. Without the necessary competence. Nobody will come to your rising. Have you not seen people who are good at singing? Faded artists we should say. They were singing really well. Then they took their time for granted. They never put more effort. They never released more albums. Just like that they become faded. Then they were good artists. But now they were not competent. Nations only come to your light. Kings come to your rising. Because me, again, I believe. Kings come to my rising. They are seeing me. I just need to be more competent at what I am doing. And anybody that wants to align with me, God will cause them to come. But they need to come. I'm doing something. Has, has your friend ever had a business and told you, post call for me? When you look at their page they last posted in 2022 why am i posting when people come to your page what are they going to see so you're not rising how will kings come when you're not rising someone needs to come that there is something your business is there there is no stock Can't you what are people going to buy you're a wife you're let me talk let me say wife because all you single people are going to be wives hmm? You're a wife, but there's no competence in your craft as a wife. You don't work, it's okay, you're a stay-at-home mom. It is okay, but as a stay-at-home mom, you wake up in the morning, you still stay in your hair bonnet with a very big cloth without bathing. You don't know how to instruct the help to clean under the sinks, to, be, to remove cobwebs, da-da-da-da-da. When your husband comes home, you're still too tired to sleep with him. You don't bring any money to the house. You've not gone back to school to say, at least let me do a master. Since I'm not working, let me find something to do. You're just there. I assure you, that king will not come to your rising. He will look for another person, Alinga again. That's why there's something called a thinking divide in marriage. People will ask, why is it that husbands lose interest in their wives after they've gotten married? You know why the person has lost interest? Toina direction, toina jolaga. There's nothing interesting about you. Nothing. You're just the same. You with your child's panty on your head. Same you. <laughs> Very unattractive. You, you, you don't bring money. You don't make sense. You don't look nice. What is there for you? Think about it. You as you, if you were younger, your husband was that. Unattractive. Doesn't bring money. Very senseless. How would you feel? Would you still want him? Would you still want him? No. And no, it's not about money, but men should make money because I feel like that's a very strong factor. Yeah, so we've learned meekness, we've learned competence. Number three is...